If you don't know a lot about the New York Jets' newest cornerback, DJ Reed, then this is the video for you. Reed was outstanding in 2021, and I didn't even know it. Playing in Seattle, Reed was the ninth overall quarterback for PFF. Despite only being 5'9", he was outstanding in zone and man coverage, and when he was moved to the right cornerback slot for Seattle, he excelled. So let's take a look at the film together, and I'll show you why Reed is such a great fit in the Robert Sala scheme, and why I think he may be the Jets' best value signing in the free agency period. Let's go. What's going on everybody, it's Luke here from Play Like a Jet, and I was up all night grinding the DJ Reed film, and I was so impressed. This video isn't me just sitting here trying to find the silver lining because this guy's on my team now and I've got to spin it. The PFF grade reflected the play of DJ Reed. I broke this into categories. So what I wanted to start with was his feel and instincts in zone coverage because it jumped off the film from one of the very first snaps I watched. That was against the Green Bay Packers in the bottom of the screen, right cornerback. And have a look in this cover two shell, how he checks that man, passes him off vertically and then redirects inside, reads the eyes of Aaron Rodgers, and look how quickly he breaks on the football. Intelligence, vision, instincts, and then breaking and athleticism to make a play on that football. Just an awesome way to start, and this was littered on the tape, a really strong feature of DJ Reed's game. This one against Detroit, he's at the top of your screen, and it's a great understanding of the game situation. Detroit's down a couple of scores, they need to push the ball down the field vertically. They want to take a shot early in the drive. DJ Reed's awake to it. Another cover two shell. Settles, sits down, checks that man. But instead of just playing his zone, he goes above and beyond and almost outside of the scheme. He can see and read by the eyes of the quarterback Boyle. They're taking a cover two hole shot. So he starts to float back, drift, and then look at the athleticism to make the play at the catch point. High points it and takes it back on the return. Instincts understanding, football IQ, just oozes out of this kid's game, awesome play and ball skills. I really like him in zone coverage. The last play I wanted to show you against the 49ers in zone coverage, kind of accentuating that part of DJ Reed's game. It's inverted Tampa 2. He's in the bottom of your screen, right cornerback. As I said, he'll be there in every single video throughout. And the thing that's impressive about this is, again, the understanding that even though he's in Tampa 2, there's two routes going vertical from his side of the field, from the trip side. So he needs to carry one of them and give support. There's no one in his cover two flat zone. So he abandons that. Then he still manages to keep his head around, have eyes on the quarterback, and he very late sees this receiver sit down from the three spot and just comes in and lays the wood and forces the pass breakup. Look at the instincts. Look at the vision, the ability to make a play and to close there are so many examples of it, and I loved this from DJ Reed. So let's take a look at DJ Reed in man coverage now, because that's where you make your money as a cornerback in the NFL. And this is man press. That's a concern you might have for him in a small outside corner, five foot nine. There's none of that on tape. Top of your screen, right cornerback slot. Against the 49ers, I want you to look at how well he does in this rep. It all starts with the press. Does a really nice job throwing off the receiver, getting him to the outside and then watch the fluency in space, the ability to undercut this route as he breaks it down. The stem of the route, great feet, and look at the positioning, how he undercuts the dig route, he takes away. That is a perfect rep in man coverage from DJ Reed. It does not get any better. Look at this in full speed. The press, ability to flip his hips, stay underneath, reads the route, undercuts. That is perfect. And another example, this time against one of the premier corners in the whole of the NFL. Devontae Adams does a great job in man, one-on-one -on -one against DJ Reed, and he wins. Once again, it starts with the press. He gets awesome extension, throws Devontae off the route, and look at him squeeze him to the sideline. What I want you to focus on is the starting point for Devontae Adams. He's just inside the numbers. He's got 10 yards of space to the outside. Look at how through the press and the squeeze, DJ takes away his space. He doesn't give him an area to work in. One more time, Adams versus Reed outside, press, squeezes him towards the sideline, ability to mirror, fantastic man coverage skills, and that's why he was so heavily regarded in free agency by Robert Sala and the Jets. One last rep in man coverage. Uh, this time, we've seen some kind of intermediate routes, how he can handle comebacks. This is a short slant, beat the man to the inside, win. 
Okay, well, he's in trail position here. Not great for a guy with short arms and five foot nine. Look how he overcomes it with closing speed. Fantastic job with the lead arm breaking this up. Reads the slant, closing speed, stays in the hip pocket, and then gets that right lead arm out. I was really impressed. I'm telling you guys, there were some misses, but 80, 90% of the time, DJ Reed won his reps in man coverage, and that is huge because we saw how much Salah wants to run it on third down. Something else I wanted to focus on with DJ Reed's game is how fluid he is in space, his hips, his feet, how easily he can flip and redirect. I just thought he was outstanding. And uh, I wanted to show an example of that, a couple against the Rams on the outside, top of your screen. Look how he takes away this underneath route. He looks like he is literally the shadow of the wide receiver here. Does a great job on Robert Woods. Like it's just tight man coverage, but he's so loose. Look how he flips his hips on this turn. Great job reading the hips of the receiver, doing a great job not being fooled by that inside move. I just thought it was awesome. And then another example from the same game against Cooper Cup, you might have heard of him, had a huge year. He's on the right-hand side, off coverage, does an awesome job being patient. Cooper sells that outside release. You can see DJ Reed takes a step, wants to close on that. Cooper Cup changes direction. Before he's even out of his break, look at DJ Reed, man. This guy is straight in the hip pocket of Cooper Cup and follows him across the front of the end zone. But watch it at full speed. This is patience, reacting, and then putting his foot in the ground and just mirroring Cooper Cup. Great fluid hips, ability to change direction on a dime. That's a really impressive play. This goes back to what I said a little earlier, but DJ Reed's a super smart football player. And in the screen game and the bubbles that teams run a hell of a lot now, He's fantastic. Read, diagnose, react. Right-hand side of your screen, I want you to look at how he reads it straight away off the bat. Pre-snap, understanding, IDs, and then makes the tackle in space. Fantastic play. But it's not a one-off. You saw these things creeping on the film every game. You saw continuations of building on the same thing. This time, he almost feigns to go into off coverage, but look how quickly he puts that left foot in the ground and gets downhill. I understand it's battered down. He doesn't get to make the play, but Devontae Adams has that man in his lap before he even would have caught the football. Fantastic ability to diagnose, to understand football, to close. I really like that area of his game. I just wanted to show you how well I thought DJ Reed handled the screens and the bubbles and how good he was at diagnosing those plays. So the last category I'm going to call off coverage prowess because I think that's something he does very, very well. And this instance is a little bit cloudy to watch on film because the quarterback drops the ball, but you can see him go into this cover three shell, starts to go into his back pedal. He understands, and again, very intelligent player. He's on the single side, so the solo side, only one receiver. And once he realizes there's no vertical threat for his cover three, he can jump this underneath little sit route or this hook. He does a great job of it, closing on the football. And look at the ball skills I talked about in the interception from earlier in this game. Does a fantastic job. So again, understanding pre-snap there's no vertical. Closing, make the play on the football, even though he's only 5'9", and then get the interception. Love that from DJ Reed. And one more from the Rams game. He's in off coverage on the top of your screen, just near the 50. And what I like about this is how fluid he is at the stem. It's really easy on these comeback routes to end up three or four yards past him. He doesn't. And then again, in the hip pocket, doesn't get there early and come back and cause a flag and gets the pass breakup. Really nice job in off coverage. But it's not all positive, And there are some negatives. One of those missed tackles, I didn't really dive into the run game stuff in this video because I wanted to more focus on the pass coverage because that's where he's going to earn his dough. But there were some issues. This is one against the Packers, and MVS just tears him apart. Vertical route, bottom of your screen, gets turned inside out, stumbles, very easy catch with six, seven yards of separation, and he takes it for a 40-yard gain. What does he do wrong here? He shuts the gate very early. I want you to watch how he closes and plants his hips. Have a look how they're facing towards the opposite sideline. That gives MVS the outside. He attacks the leverage. He can't flip them, and he's in a poor position and loses balance. Has to do a better job being patient with his hips, not snapping them so quickly, and giving the receiver leverage to attack. And then something I noticed a little bit was on those comeback routes that you saw just two plays ago, sometimes when he's in trail position, which is kind of this position right here in the hip pocket of the receiver, 
he gets a little off balance and trying to play catch up. And as a result of that, he'll end up a few yards off on the stem and on the break because he's trying so hard to catch up and to stay in phase that he'll lose a step and that he can't change direction quickly. Another example of it, again, top of your screen, exact same kind of route. This time it's more a traditional comeback. As he's, you know, you can see him battling with his balance and speed. He gets too far over his toes, loses balance at the stem, and it's a very easy reception. So that's something to watch and one of the negatives of the DJ Reed film. So that's DJ Reed. $33 million for three years. When I heard it, I was apprehensive. Like a lot of you, I wasn't watching Seattle games week in and week out in the NFL. He's five foot nine. He's a perfect fit. He's been coached by Robert Seller and the 49ers. He has a winning pedigree. But it's more than that. His skill set, guys. You saw the zone coverage skills, the instincts, the man coverage, being able to press guys as a five foot nine receiver on the outside. Tackling's a bit of an issue, and he can be an ankle tackler and take some bad angles. But all in all, his coverage skills were phenomenal. And there's a reason he was PFF's ninth rated corner in 2021. Great scheme fit. I think at 25 years of age, he doesn't have a risk of falling off a cliff like some of these other guys, Stefan Gilmore, what we saw Tremaine Johnson do with the Jets. I love the signing, and I think he's going to be a key piece playing on the right-hand side of the New York Jets defense.